Today on Let Them Talk TV, you are going to learn everything you need to know about the Cockney accent spoken in London. Now, as you know, I am a Londoner, but when I teach these lessons, I teach standard British English, which is what I'm talking now, by the way, more or less anyway. But in London, we have our own accent and it's called Cockney. Now, Cockney is a working class accent that originated around the city and the east end of London. But now you'll find it all over London and beyond. In the past, Londoners tried to hide their Cockney accents when they tried to rise the social ranks. In polite society, they were mocked and shunned. And having an accent, a Cockney accent, could hold them back, but not anymore. Now it's cool to have a Cockney accent. It's worn as a badge of pride, and you'll find it everywhere in the media on the bbc in hollywood lots of famous people are or were cockneys but the, for example adele jason statham amy winehouse russell brand michael Caine, and many more now i'm an english teacher so of course when i teach english i use standard british english i'll try and say that again standard british english RP, it's often called RP, Received Pronunciation. Now, this is the English that you'll find in English textbooks and dictionaries. But today, with a little help from my cousin, Bob, say hello, Bob. Hello. We're going to learn some Cockney. So if you're planning to visit London, speak to a Londoner, listen to a Londoner, or just have an interest in the accent of this great city, then stay tuned. and welcome to Let Them Talk. And today we're going to look at the Cockney accent. Now, try to simplify this lesson and keep it relatively brief with as little linguistic jargon as possible. We're going to look at the accent at three levels. And for that, I have at great expense invested in a Cockneyometer. Here it is. Every house should have one. You see, Cockney is not just one thing, it's more of a spectrum of an accent. So level one is just the pronunciation of words and how they differ from RP. So here are some of the things to look out for. Replacing the T sound with a glottal stop. The glottal stop is a sound made from the throat rather than the T that comes from the front of the mouth. So, for example, water becomes water. Butter becomes butter. In Cockney, we drop the H sound entirely. So head becomes ed. Hat becomes at. Me hat is on me head. The unvoiced TH sound, that's when you put your tongue between your teeth and blow in such words as thanks, think, Thursday. That's replaced by an F. Banks, think, Thursday. If it's a voice TH and it comes in the middle of a word, such as brother, weather, it's pronounced like a V sound, brother, weather. The final L becomes a W, a brother's new girlfriend. So here I am with my cousin Bob, and he's going to speak in Cockney while I speak in standard English, RP if you like. Now we're going to move the cockneyometer to level one. At level one, we're just looking at pronunciation changes, taking into account the sounds changes I already mentioned. So you should understand most of what Bob says. Are you ready? Yes, let's go. Ah, Hello. cousin Bob, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Hello, how are you? All right, mate. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Beautiful day, isn't it? Harry Potter 
brought his new girlfriend to our house to meet my mother. Harry Potter brought his new girlfriend to our house to meet my mother. I'm going to have a shower in Liverpool Street Station. I'm going to have a shower in Liverpool Street Station. I can't go south of the river, my friend, because I haven't been vaccinated. I can't go south of the river, mate, because I ain't vaccinated. Thanks for the butter, but now I feel ill. I hope I'll be better by Thursday. Thanks for the butter, but now I feel ill. I hope I'll be better by Thursday. The weather in Hackney is lovely in autumn. The weather in Hackney is lovely in autumn. Okay, did you get that? Interesting, just a few sound changes from standard British English and you've got it. But I'm warning you, it gets more difficult because now we're going to move the dial on the cockneyometer up to level two. Okay, on level two, in addition to pronunciation changes, we're going to look at some Cockney expressions and vocabulary, which are different from standard English and not just pronunciation. You should still understand quite a lot, but it's getting difficult. Wow, the pretty girl I met in the West End is very rich. Cool, blimey. That fit bird I met up west is well minted. Ten pounds for a tub of jelly deals? That's ridiculous. Ten quid for a pint and a tub of jelly deals? Do me a favour. The gentleman was smoking cigarettes in the toilets. I said, stop it my friend, that's not right. Please leave immediately. This bloke was smoking fags in the bog. I said, leave out, mate. You're bang out of order. Now sling your hook. I bought my car from a suspicious gentleman on the old Kent Road for 250 pounds. I bought me motor from this dodgy geezer on the old Kent Road for half a monkey. What are you doing? Are you flirting with my girlfriend? What's your game, sunshine? Were you chatting up me missus? It's getting difficult, isn't it? But we've not finished yet. Now we're going to move the dial on the cockneyometer up to the maximum, to level three. I'm giving it all to his Captain. If I push it any harder, the whole thing will blow. Now in level three, as well as the other changes, we are going to use Cockney rhyming slang. Now this is a particular type of slang which is unique to London. Let me explain. Let's look at this phrase, lemon and lime. Lemon and lime, it means time. Huh? Why does it mean time? Simply because the second word in the phrase rhymes with time. Lime, time, lime, time. Lemons and limes have nothing to do with time. It's all about the rhyme. So in a phrase, you substitute the word time with lemon and lime. So what's the time becomes what's the lemon and lime. Have you got it? But sometimes that's not obscure enough. So just say the first word of the pair. What's the lemon? Oi, what's the lemon? Well, it's half past nine. You get it? Okay, another example. Can I use your dog and bone to call me missus? Dog and bone? Dog and bone? What do you think that means? Phone, of course. Dog and bone, phone. Bone rhymes with phone. Can we drop the first word of the pair? Yes, we can. My battery is dead. 
Can I use the, your dog to call the missus? Hmm. Sometimes we can just use the first word of the pair and sometimes we need to use both. For example, he's brown bread means he's dead. But you can't say he's brown. Why? I don't know, but it's like that. Sometimes you have to use both. So, my battery is brown bread. Can I use your dog to call the missus? You get it? When you have several rhymes in a sentence, it becomes really difficult to understand. And why is it so difficult? Because that's how it's supposed to be. Back in the day, we didn't want the police or any other outsiders prying into our business. So, if you understand that, let's look at some more examples with Bob. But this time you might need to read the subtitles for an explanation. That's a bit of luck. I found a five pound note on the road. That's a bit of fry chuck. I found a lady Godiva on the frog. A thief stole my hat from my car. Some tea leaf. I'll finish me tip for tap from me jam jar. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. I'm cream crackered. I'm going to Uncle Ted. Really? You paid £25 for two beers? Are you joking? What? You paid a pony for two Britneys? You having a Turkish? Can you move your ass? I can't see the television. Move your kai, but I can't see the custards. I'm sorry, my friend, but that Rolex is a fake and I'm not lying. Sorry, Mel China, but that Rolex is a Sexton Blake. And I'm not telling Porky's neither. So he cut off his hair and got a tattoo of his wife on his face. So he cut off his barnet and got a tattoo of his trouble and strife on his boat. I'm broke. Can you cash me a check? I'm brassic. Can you sausage me a Gregory? So Jungle Tribe to our solar panel, give us a hunger strike or leave a Clark Kent and see you next lemon. What the f*** are you talking about? So I met this bird and I took her for an Everton and we was having a chin wag when she said, I'm feeling a bit moby, I'm going to scarf her. I said, don't leave me on the Jack Jones. She said, well, come back to my gap and we'll watch the custard and I'll open an Aristotle. So I've got some sausage.